Okay, uh, so welcome to this video where I'll go through uh, running the OUCC. Um, I'm gonna. I mean, this is uh, one of the tests that I've uh, I've 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 provided to some of the students. Uh, now, what I'm gonna go through this video it will be to understand how the website works, understand the interface, uh, which will hopefully make answering the questions a little bit easier. Uh, and I'll also go through some of the easiest questions that I've come across to help just sort of ease you into some of the questions. Um, so at the moment, what I've done is I've logged in. You'll see the questions on the left-hand side. Uh, so if I go on to the first question, you can see my question will come up. I'll have a question. I'll have an area where I can view uh, my code running. And I'll also have an area which, <clears throat> which I can code in. Uh, now, in this case, uh, they've given me a code uh, or a program to draw something uh, using shapes uh, and this is a question which will come up quite regularly this sort of question uh, i've got another one to do with file size uh, so they've asked to basically figure out the file size they've actually given me um, the formula to use within the question so some of them will actually uh, give you some idea of how to answer it uh, it's just about converting it to code uh, we usually have a one to do with a maze as well encoding um, you know a sprite to get from one point to the other and they would usually have one to do with editing an image as well. So these are quite common questions, uh, but I've tried to sort of just get the, the most easiest versions so that we can uh, give that a bit of a trial. I can go through that uh, question uh, and explain how we'd answer it. Now I'm going to start off with the one which I think is the most easiest, uh, which will be this long maze short program. Uh, a robot has to find its own way from the red square to the green square. So we've got the red square here, we've got the green square here. We want to try and get from this red square to the green square. It faces a long journey, but can only saw a program with a maximum of four code blocks. So, I mean, doing that itself would have been quite easy, but they've limited us to four code blocks now. Uh, our task is to write a program to get the robot to its destination. Now, one thing we can always do is hide this menu, so that gives us a bit more space uh, to work with. Because the area they gave us quite here is actually quite small, to be honest. Um, what we'd have is we'd have blocks of code we can use. Now, these do vary um, based on each question, which I think is good because they give you the, the blocks of code that you need rather than giving you a whole load of extra blocks that you will not need. Uh, you may not necessarily need to use all of them, um, but obviously there's more than one way of answering most of these questions. Uh, in some cases, they will be in categories as well, but we'll look at that uh, once we get to one of those questions. Now, if we look at this question, answer this question, we can understand that what I will need to do is basically constantly go forward. And at any point where I cannot go forward anymore, I'll simply turn right and carry on going forward. So this obviously would be a repeat loop. Uh, so let's pop a repeat block in there. Uh, and like I said, we're going to constantly go forward if there's a path ahead. And if there isn't, we'll just turn right. And it should constantly do that or repeatedly do that until we get to the middle. So we do have two options. We do have an if path ahead or an if path ahead else. Um, and we have said we're not just going to do something if there's a path ahead. If there isn't, we are going to do something differently. So we'll use the else block. So repeat if path ahead, we can move forward. And if there's no path ahead, what we can do is turn right. Okay. And once we run that, that should simply work. So if there's a path ahead, move forward. Otherwise, turn right. It's going to move forward. And when it cannot go forward anymore, when there's no more paths forward, it will simply turn right. We can speed this up. So we've got a slow version. If we wanted to see what was wrong with our code, that does help us uh, with debugging. We've got a normal, normal version as well. And we've got a fast version that will really speed it up. And now in this case, what is told us that we're correct, we cannot go and uh, amend that. It's correct. We can move on now. And that's one of the positive things uh, compared to this and the Beavers Challenge. We can actually do a lot of trial and error until we get the answer that we want. Uh, so let's move on to our next question. Uh, so let's go on to the tree. Uh, and in this case, you can see we've got a different block of code. Um, so make the tree shown below out of green triangles and a black square. The colors shown are faded versions of the true colors. So they've told us green triangles and a black square. You'll write a program using only one type of block to draw the image shown. Your hint is that all radius and position values are multiples of 10s. So that does really help us out. Let's hide this menu. Uh, and what I'd recommend is you can always give it a go uh, with one block, with one shape, see how it goes, and obviously do a bit of trial and error. Uh, that will help you with that. So let's firstly add a shape. I'm going to try and do three triangles first. So let's start off with T1. Uh, number of sides, obviously, in this case, will be three sides. Let's make that green. 
the radius. So I'm going to guess uh, the radius of these. Uh, but what I'll do is just in part of my sort of trial and error process, I'm going to leave it as 20. Let's see what size cut that comes up with. Position X, as we know, we have the X coordinates which go horizontally. Uh, and we have the Y axes which go vertically. So let's just very quickly draw that here. So we have X and we have our Y axes here. Um, anyway, let's head back. So uh, our X axes, we can see that that is on a 50. Remember, it will be a multiple of 10. And in terms of our y-axis, we're not quite sure exactly which one we have here. Let's leave that on 20 for now. Let's run that. There we go. So we can see that that is the correct position for one of my triangles, but the wrong size. So I've got two options. I can either try and move that down. Uh, that looks like the second triangle, the size of the second triangle. I can either try and move that down, or I can try and change the size of this one. Again, let's hide that menu again. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the radius. We know it's multiple to 10, so let's go to 10. Let's test that, test that out again. There we go. Much better. Hide my menu. It does get a little bit annoying. Let's duplicate that. So I can right-click, duplicate. Let's move that down. Now, I will need to change the name of this because if I don't change the name of it, it's just going to simply move uh, that triangle. So I'm going to now call this T2. Um, I call it T1, but anyway, T2. Um, we know that it's still going to be three sides. We know it's going to be green. We know the radius is going to, oh, we want to increase the radius this time, 20. Position X, we're still going to be on the X axis. Uh, and in terms of Y, uh, we're going to move down. And let's try 40 this time. Let's run that. And there we go. Happy with where we are. Let's duplicate that again. Let's hide this menu again first. Let's duplicate that. And let's try T3. Three sides, green, radius in this case. Let's increase that by 10 again. Position is still, X is still 50, Y. Let's try 60 this time. Okay, so we're going up in 20s. Uh, pretty sure that's going to be right. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to duplicate that again. Let's try and do my black square now. I'm going to call this one S instead. S for square, four sides. Let's make that one black this time. Radius, that does look like it's going to be a 10. Position X, 50 again. Position Y, I'm going to try 70 with this one. Let's see how we get on with this. Let's run a bit of trial and error again. Obviously, I can see that it's drawn this black square on top of the three triangles. So as we can see that the order is quite important in this. Let's hide that menu. And in some cases, they may want it to be done in a particular order with the green triangles as well. Uh, so they may want, they may want sort of, even though we can't see it, they may want uh, the black square to be drawn first, then that triangle with this triangle on top and that third triangle on top of that. Um, so sometimes it, we might just need to change the order, even though it does look correct. In this case, for example, um, it does look correct, but obviously it's not the order that they wanted. So I'm going to try and just swap that around. OK, so it will look the same. Let's try and run that. And in this case, that is correct. So even though it does look the same, they did want it in a particular order. So in this case, I do have the black square right at the bottom. And I've got this triangle on top, this triangle on top, this triangle on top, which I think is a little bit unfair, but you know, fair enough. I got there in the end. Uh, but do try that if that does not work for you. Anyway, next question. Uh, an image is made up of uh, is made up of a grid of pixels, for example, 500 pixels wide by 300 pixels high. So imagine we have a, a rectangular grid, um, and we have let's say squares going across, squares going down. Uh, we know that we have 500 squares going across, 300 pixels going down. So this is how an image works. You have pixels, or imagine the square grid that I'm talking about, and each grid, each square in that grid has its own individual color. And obviously, when we look at that together, we can see an image that comes across. So it's sort of like a mosaic. Um, well, they're, they're, those individual boxes are actually called pixels, which are small dots, which have its own individual color. And as sometimes you can see when you zoom into an image, you can start to see those uh, those 
those squares. Uh, so that's how an image is made. So we've got all of those pixels. Uh, an image's color depth represents how many colors each pixel can be made from. For example, a GIF may support 8-bit pixels. Uh, so when we talk about bits, some of you may know uh, a bit is either a 1 or a 0. And these 1s and zeros uh, make up all the data that we see on a computer every day. So each of those pixels, uh, so each of those dots which have a color, would have a certain number of pixels assigned to them. If we only had one, one, uh, sorry, would have a certain number of bits assigned to them, not pixels. Each pixel would have a certain number of bits assigned to them. So that's a certain number of ones or zeros. Now, if we have a pixel which has only one bit, then we can only get two colors because it's only going to be either a zero or one in that data for that one pixel. It's either a zero or a one. So we can only have two options in terms of colors. If we have two pixels, we have uh, those pixels can either be a zero zero, a zero one, a one zero, or a one one. So in which case we can now get four colors. So we've doubled the number of bits, um, but we've really, well, in this case, we've doubled the number of colors as well. Uh, if we had three pixels, uh, sorry, three bits per pixel, uh, we can actually now get eight colors. Um, but in this case, we actually have eight bits per pixel. So that's eight ones or zeros. Um, so that obviously means we get more colors. Uh, but anyway, go ahead and back to the question. To calculate the file size of an image in megabytes, we multiply the number of pixels by the color depth and then divide by this number here, which is just over 8 million. Your task is to complete the function provided. So they've given us a function already. They've started us off so that it outputs the file size of the image in megabytes, given any positive values for height, width, and color depth. Do not alter any of the blocks provided. So it wants us to work out the image, uh, sorry, the size, the file size of that image uh, using the data they've given us. So we know that we need to multiply the number of pixels, as written here, number of pixels by the color depth and then divide by this number here. How do we get the number of pixels? Well, we know that it's 500 pixels wide by 300 pixels high. So we'll multiply the two. Uh, that's something that you should have worked out in maths a few years ago uh, to work out the area of, uh, of a rectangle. You do the, the width times the height. In this case, we have our width, which is 500 and our height, which is 300. Then we're going to multiply by the color depth. So how many bits per pixel? In this case, it's eight. Uh, and then we're going to divide by this number. Now, if you imagine, if we were to give you this uh, using a pen and paper and a calculator, it's very straightforward. You're going to multiply 500 by 300 times by 8 and divide by this number here. But in this case, they're asking us to write a code to, 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 to create a calculator to work this out. Um, and instead of using these numbers here, 300, 500, and 8, we're actually going to use variables within our formula. So let's... Uh, start to get this so we've got a four so we've got three variables height width and color depth these are the three variables we're going to use we've got a fourth variable called file size which would be uh, the variable that we're going to output uh, so all we're going to simply do is we're going to set our variable and the variable we're going to set will be file size you want to multiply these three together so let's head over to maths let's grab a couple of these we can actually input these inside one another so one, two. So we've got three here, but obviously we will want a fourth one because we're going to actually grab this number later on. And in this case, we're going to use our variables. So we're going to say, well, oh, not the file size. Let's take our height. Okay, I can actually duplicate that. Let's put that here. Our height times our width. <coughs> Let's grab one more. Duplicate. And we're going to take our color depth and we're going to multiply these three together. So now in this case, we've got a height, which is 300 times 500 times eight. And now we're going to divide that by the number we had before. So in this case, eight, three, eight, eight, six, zero, eight. Okay, so this is what you would have done if I gave you a pen and paper to do this and a calculator, obviously. Um, and that's how that should return our file size. Now I'm going to run this. It's given me the number here. So this is the file size. If I click OK, and that should have told me I'm correct. So again, that does look like quite a difficult question. 
They've actually given us the calculation in the question as well. Um, but once we just think about how we do that in real life, which is actually what essentially what coding is, we'd think how we'd follow through with a certain task, think about it step by step and just put it into code. You can see that's quite a straightforward task. Now, if we move on to the next question or the last question I've given you, which is called too dark, uh, a similar one to do with images. So we've got an image of some flowers is too dark. In a workspace below, write a program that doubles the brightness of all the pixels. Now, in this case, what we're going to be doing, uh, we need to understand how a picture is made. So we understand we have the pixels. So we'd have loads of pixels going across. So if we had the same size as the previous question, we'd have 500 pixels going across. If we think about the height, we'd have 300 pixels going down. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through each pixel and amending, um, amending the colors. Now, each pixel, like we mentioned, is made up of bits of data, so ones and zeros. Um, and in this case, or a lot of a lot of um, images in in today's day and age, they actually have 24 bits per pixel, so 24 ones and zeros. They're actually breaking broken down into three sections. So we have something called RGB values. So that it's how many red, how many green, and how many blue we have in there. So an RGB value. Uh, so if we talk about red, green, and blue, uh, how much red do we have? How much green? How much blue? Now, we can, with 8 bits, we can get up to 255 different shades of red, green, and blue. Um, so if we have a figure which is closer to zero, it will be darker. Zero would mean that there's no red, green, or blue in that whatsoever. If we go up to 255, which is the highest number we can go to, we do get closer to a much more sort of brighter red. So we have all the red we can have, all the green we can have, all the blue we can have. Now, if we do have 255 of all three of them, we would have a white color. If we have zero of all three of them, we will have a black color. So each pixel has an RGB value. We want to essentially go through each pixel, take the current red, green, and blue values, and it says we want to double the brightness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that figure and multiply it by two. So how are we going to do this? We're actually going to start off with image, and we're going to use this block here for P in pixels. Now, this is something, if you imagine, it's well, as if we've got a list, a list of all the pixels. And we're going to go through each pixel one by one in the image. So for P in pixels, we'll go through each pixel one by one. And what we're going to do is we are going to say, uh, let's set the R value. So let's set the current red value. Let's set the red value. Uh, we're going to set it to, what do we want to set it to? We want to actually get the current R value. So what is red at the moment? And we're going to multiply it by two. So let's hide this menu very quickly. Let's say set. Ooh, let's say to set the R value. Oops. Let's pop that back up. So set the R value. What do we want to set it to? We want to get the current R value, and we want to multiply it by two. So what this will do is we'll go through each pixel, take the current red value. So if it's five, let's say. It's now going to multiply it by 2, so now it's 10, and it's going to set it to that current value. So all the red values will simply be doubled. But we want to do the bright whole overall brightness, so we're going to do that for all three colors, so R, G, and B. So I'm going to right click, click on this, an easy way to do that. Let's pop that there. Let's duplicate that again, pop that there, and we'll simply change that to G and B. So set the G value to the current G value multiplied by 2. Set the blue value to the current blue value. Multiply that by 2 as well. And as we run that, that will go through each and every pixel. Take the current RGB values, multiply by 2. And as we can see, that is a lot brighter. So again, once we understand how the image is made up, how we can get that data, multiply by 2. That's quite an easy question again. So like I did say, these were some of the easiest questions that I came across. Um, but obviously, they are very difficult if you do not have any context behind it, if you do not understand how to answer them. Um, but hopefully, I've given you a bit of idea, a bit of an insight in how that, those questions are can be answered, a bit of knowledge about images as well. Um, I mean, I hope you do sort of find the actual OUCC challenge a lot easier because of that. Do check out some of my other videos. Um, and if you do have access to my quizzes, please do try some of the quizzes, um, access some of my other videos. And uh, yeah, I hope that gives you a better insight into how to answer them. Again, all the best.